everyone, welcome back to the One Shot Heroes channel. I am Jackal Wolf, and this is another NPC on deck. This is the series where I'm putting together a collection of NPCs for myself for a future campaign. This is the second NPC on deck that I've created. The last one was a thought out character. I already had a plan in my mind of where I wanted that character to go. For this episode, I want to do something a little bit different. While I was working on the last episode, I came across a really cool section in the Dungeon Master's Guide, and that is the random NPC creation section. So rather than starting with a preconceived idea, we're going to use these tables to create ourselves a very random NPC. But before we get started, now would be a great time to hit that subscribe button, click on that notification bell, that way you're alerted every time I post a new video to this channel. Also, if you're enjoying this content you want to support, the best way you can help out is by word of mouth. And by that I mean sharing us on social media, talking us up with your Dungeons & Dragons community. If you do mention us on social media though, hashtag one shot heroes, that is the number one S-H-O-T-H-E-R-O-E-S. Throw that in the message somewhere and there's a good chance that we might be able to give you a shout out back. Also, don't forget to support your local game shop. They are a great resource for D&D &D and other role-playing content, as well as a great source for expanding your D&D community. But enough about that, let's get back to this video. So like I said, this is going to be a completely random NPC. I've got no idea what they're going to be like right now. As we do the roles, the character's going to start building themselves. All we're going to do is fill in the details and then kind of see where it leads us. So I got a little bit of a dice tray down here. This is right out of Tabletop Simulator. It's a nice little visual tool, a little bit better than me rolling dice in real life and trying to get a camera on them. So first up is NPC appearance. This is a D20 roll that's going to give us a basic idea for what this character looks like. So I'm going to roll the D20 and a seven. So a seven is missing teeth. So that's an interesting start. I'd be interested to kind of figure out how this character lost their teeth or is it maybe just bad dental hygiene? I don't, I'm not too sure about that. Next stat's going to be the NPC abilities. Now there's going to be a high ability and a low ability because NPCs don't need a full set of skills, but you probably need to know what they're really good at versus what they're really bad at. So this is a D6 roll for the high ability. And that is a four. So that is intelligent. So they are a very intelligent NPC. And then we're going to roll one more for the low ability. And that is a three. Three. So the low ability is constitution. So they're going to be an intelligent person, but maybe not a super healthy person. Which, you know what, kind of makes sense if they're missing teeth. Maybe they just don't have the healthiest of lifestyles. All right, so next up is NPC talent. So this is back to a D20 roll. This is going to give our NPC a little bit of skill flavor. So we roll that dice and a 16. So they are an expert dart thrower or rock skipper. Okay, so that is interesting. That's an interesting skill to have. And when you say a dart thrower, I'm automatically put in mind of the, you know, actual darts that you see on TV, which is a very, you know, tavern-like activity. So maybe this is a NPC that spends a lot of time in taverns, gets in a lot of dart competitions maybe. As it's a skill, maybe he's a champion. Maybe he's, you know, won something sometime in the past. I can see, you know, and again, I, I maybe there's a little bit of a stereotype, but, you know, we've got a bar, we've got missing teeth, we've got, a you know, a dart skill. So, you know, maybe they're a little bit of a country bumpkin. I mean, they do have a high intelligence though. So that, that, you know, again, don't want to get into too much of a stereotype there, but um, maybe he's a con artist in a way. Maybe he um, he uses his intelligence to maybe scam people a little bit, you know, with his, you know, dart skill. Maybe he plays badly to start and then he'll sort of picks that up a little bit later on. But next up is NPC mannerisms. So this is, again, a D20. So we're going to roll that. And that is a 10 colorful quotes and expressions all right so maybe this this fits in a little bit with the country bumpkin thing maybe you know he's maybe he's winning at the dart game and he's like you know slithering sandwiches or 
or he's got like a catchphrase, you know, that's a bullseye for me, or I, I don't know much about darts, so uh, I don't bullseye and uh, you try to get the, the triple 20. I don't like that slithering sandwiches for some reason. It doesn't make any sense, but it actually sounds like a really, really good saying for a character to have. All right, so up next is the NPC interaction trait. So this is how an NPC would interact with a, I guess, a non-hostile character. Obviously, you go in with as, with a little bit of hostility. They're probably going to be, you know, more hostile. But if you go in as a neutral character, this is a D12. So we're going to roll that. And that's a five. So that is curious. So, you know, maybe he's a, he's intelligent. You know, maybe he's just a naturally curious guy. He's always, you know, asking questions about what people are doing, where they are going. You know, uh, maybe he's trying to find out some information. Maybe, you know, find out if they got a little bit of money. Maybe just get under their skin a little bit. You know, you, you're playing the game, you're trying to focus and he's just asking, you know, questions, you know, you know, where are you from? Where are you going? How are you doing? What you eating? What you drinking? What's your favorite color? I can see that, you know, really throwing off an opponent's game. So next up is NPC ideals. And this is a set of three. We've got a good ideal, evil ideal, a lawful ideal, chaotic ideal, and the neutral idea or other ideals. So this kind of sets up their alignment, I guess. And it really depends, you know, we got to pick if is it going to be good or evil? Is good which side of the column is that going to be on? So let, let's roll that first dice. We've got a 4 that is life or pain. So far, I mean, he's not really coming across as a evil character, so let's keep that as the life, you know, so He's certainly not out to, you know, kill people. He might be out there to scam some people. You know, he's, he's curious about them. He probably lives life to the fullest. Um, you know, he, he certainly wouldn't take a life unnecessary. Uh, he's definitely not that type of uh, character. Uh, so second one is the lawful idea, chaotic ideal. And we have rolled a three which is honor or freedom. I can see this one going either way. Honor, I mean, if he's a competitive darts player, I mean, there's you know, honor among the, you know, the trade or among the skill. But freedom, I mean, that's if he's a little bit of a, I don't want to say a scam artist, but uh, taking advantage of people's, you know, inability to play the game, maybe. He might uh, sucker a couple people in. That's a tough one. That's almost a 50-50 on that one. Let's hold on to that for a bit. And we'll think if he's on the honor side or the freedom side. So the last one is the neutral ideal or the other ideals. And we rolled a one. So that's balance or aspiration. Balance, I'm not too sure if that makes a lot of sense in this case aspiration maybe you know he's he's a competitive darts player he's going from town to town competition to competition and maybe he's just trying to be the best dart player in the world or the county or the country or you know whatever your campaign setting is you know that's just his goal he's he's out there you know to be number one so he's definitely got some ambition there so next up is the npc bonds this is a d10 Basically, this is similar to what a player bond would be. This is something in the past of the player, or in this case, the NPC, that gives meaning to their, you know, life or to their goal or something like that. So let's roll that D10. And that is a nine out for revenge. All right. So maybe in his younger days when, you know, he was still new to the, the dart circuit, um, maybe somebody took advantage of him. Maybe he's, you know, an older, you know, more experienced, um, darts player, you know, beat him at a, you know, very important competition and, you know, maybe rubbed it in a little bit, maybe, you know, made him feel really bad. And now he, this character's out for revenge. He's, he's out to beat him at his own game. He's, that's why he's, you know, trying to be the best in the world is he's got something to prove to this other NPC that's, you know, basically taking advantage of him. 
And then the last one is NPC flaws and secrets. This is a D12 roll. Let's roll that. That is a two. Enjoys decadent pleasures. All right. So, I mean, he's out traveling a lot. He probably doesn't have the best diet. Maybe he likes his cakes. Maybe he likes his pastries. Maybe that's why he's missing a couple of teeth. He's, he's, he's really into the sweet. He's got a very, very sweet tooth. I could even see him while he's playing darts. He's got to have, you know, he's got to be eaten in between something sweet, something, you know, uh, something sugary. Like, I, I want to say like a lollipop. He's always got these, that, that one of those characters has always got a lollipop in his mouth, you know, chewing on it or whatever while he's, he was doing his thing. That's his thing. He's, you know, he's, he puts the candy in his mouth, you know, takes a shot, you know, and then almost like, you know, somebody with a, like a cigarette or something like that. He's, he's got to have a piece of candy with him at all times. The other thing is we don't have a name. I could just pull up a random name generator, but that, I mean, it would fit with a random character for sure. So you know what? I'm actually going to leave this up to you guys. I think this would be a fun way to get the community involved with this as well. So let me know in the comments below if you got a really good name for this character. So all we got left to do is figure out how this NPC might interact with a group of player characters. We've talked a lot about being in a tavern, so there's a good chance that's where the players would run across him. Maybe in your world there's a side story about a darts contest and the players run into him on his way, you know, from one city to another. Or if your players kind of force your hand and, you know, absolutely demand resting in an inn and you need to kind of populate it with some characters, he'd be standing in the corner, you know, playing his little dart game, you know, eating his little candy there, probably minding his own business. But I think the second you describe him as a, you know, resident of this tavern or as like a patron of this tavern, your player characters are going to get really interested in him. He, they're really, he's really the kind of character that your players would zone in on and try to at least interact with. So probably, you know, one of the players might, you know, challenge him to a darts game. I imagine it'd be some sort of dexterity check, maybe sleight of hand check. He would probably have a fairly good one. Intelligence is his high score, but you know, he is a professional. So if he's playing a fair game, I'd just say he'd probably have like a plus three, plus four to his sleight of hand check. If you wanted him to be playing underhanded, maybe give him a little bit of an advantage, you know, certainly if he's doing his little chit chat thing. So he's asking the questions of the player, you know, where are you going? How are you doing? What you eating? Maybe make your player make a wisdom check. If they fail that check, now they're rolling at disadvantage. That leaves the question, you know, what happens if your player wins? Like this guy certainly considers himself to be one of the top players in the world maybe this is an opportunity to give a NPC a nemesis, like even just a minor nemesis. Like maybe the player becomes the one that this character is out for revenge against. So maybe they keep running into this NPC over and over again. He's always challenging them to the darts. You know, maybe he's cheating a little bit more. Maybe he's trying to get a little bit more of advantage, but he becomes obsessed with beating the one character that beat him. It would certainly be a good opportunity to have a non-violent nemesis. You know, just that character that always shows up and is always kind of causing maybe just a little bit of mischief for the party. And the one thing we can't forget is he's got those colorful expressions. Again, I, the country bumpkin thing, I keep going back to that. But that slippery sandwich or... I slithering sandwich you know that i don't know that one's just stuck in my head but any sort of like country wisdom might be the the thing that he throws out there or you know the suckering succotash or that uh rapscallious rapscallion you know type of you know cursing when he loses or that bullseye for the win you know sort of catchphrase and yes, there we go. So that is the dart player NPC. I'm not going to name him again. Throw a comment down below. If you guys got an idea for a name, I'd really, really love to hear it. I'd also really love to hear it. If you throw this character in one of your campaigns, I'd love to hear how your players interacted with them, but that's going to be for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>